Hello everyone, I am Ishani. I am so glad that you stopped by. Thank you to all my returning subscribers and if you are new here to my channel, welcome. Today's video is in collaboration with Adith and we are sharing our hacks to common card making mistakes. I am sharing more than 15 mistakes and how you can correct them along with some tips and tricks so I hope you will watch this video till the end. Many mistakes can be avoided if we use a stamping platform but today I will be using normal stamping blocks to stamp and I love to use a foam pad beneath my card before I stamp. My first tip is to know what medium you want to color with. You need a waterproof ink for water coloring and you also need to use a watercolor paper and if it's alcohol markers the inks change. Next is, please condition your stamp before you stamp it on the main card stock. You can condition it by conditioning it with an eraser or use a Versamark ink for stamping. But when you don't want to bring all these things onto your work surface, I usually stamp my image on a scrap paper and rub it off with a stamp chamois. I know I will not stamp it wonky because I'm recording and I'm alert, but trust me, I mostly am stamping wonky. So purposely, I am stamping this fashionable girl wonky. Now, don't touch your stamped image, especially if it's pigmenting as they dry very slow and you can avoid getting this streak like this on my swan. And how can I save the swan? I can die cut it out, I can fussy cut it if I don't have coordinating dies or maybe I can add water under the swan by swiping some mini ink cubes or maybe stamping water. So you can modify your designs if there is something like a streak and you don't want to waste your paper go ahead and start thinking how you can add something else. Now that we have our lady stamped wonky, what we can do is to measure either with the ruler or with the help of the grid on your work surface or just by your eye, chop off with the trimmer. Once you trim one of the sides, to cut the other sides gets easy. This will result in reducing the size of your main card base but I don't mind, I actually love broad border on my cards. Now you know why I have such small panels on my regular card bases. The other way is to use a frame die that will cover the difference of the angle of the paper. So I'm taking this frame die and I'll die cut my stamped image and make a frame, a dotted frame around it. After the stamping mistakes, let's go ahead and do some coloring mistakes. I'm just going to focus on Copic coloring and I have colored this lady with my alcohol markers. And erroneously, because her neck was so slim, I had some ink out of the neck, which I'm going to blend out with this zero marker, which is the blender marker by Copics. And for this marker, I prefer using a bullet nib as it gives more precision. Sometimes when we are coloring the faces of small critters in people, you tend to get the color in the eyes where it should have left, it should have been white. So to remove the color, I am going to again use this blender. And when the main color fades, when you are touching up and removing the ink, you can go ahead and touch it up again with some more color which was done previously. Like I am doing the skin. And there are also sometimes when ink goes outside of the lines so you can try to push it back with the blender but if it still is leaving a mark what you can do is take a white gel pen and try to cover your mistakes with a white pen because a background is white it is going to get camouflaged many times you don't get the blender pen in the set like I did not have this pen in my set so I bought it separately and it is such a good investment because this is one marker that I'm using every time, every time I color. My next tip is when you get a lot of things outside the lines and you're trying to blend it out, you can also create a halo effect with the light grays or blues and go around the image which will make it instantly pop up and hide all your mistakes very conveniently. All the mistakes that I'm showing you today are as I'm making a card. So next I'm going again to a stamping mistake which is so frustrating and I know you know and you already know the fixes to it but I've got another idea to fix a wonky sentiment. You definitely have been covering your wonky sentiments with a strip of correct sentiment 
but for this card i am going to die cut my wonky sentiment and add more interest to a clean and simple card by adding a die cut instead so i am going to cut out my hello gorgeous with this beautiful small die that i have and now i will take a paper also because i want to show you some more mistakes i'm using a black colored paper and i'll do the heat embossing of my sentiment on the black card stock for my card base i'm going to take a black card stock and actually if i adhere my panel onto the black card stock the window can be used for stamping my sentiment but uh, for some more purposes of mistakes i'm going to use this black card stock and i will stamp my sentiment on this card stock with versa mark most of the times i emboss my sentiments with white embossing powder on a black card stock and i'll be doing the same for this example but first you have to treat your card stock with anti static powder you can use the fancy tools that have the powder in it or you can make your own with some corn flour and baby powder mixed together i have put this mixture of powders in this small sock and please pardon me for how dirty it is it is around 6 years old and <laughs> i have not washed it i just keep filling it so for my sentiment i am stamping hello gorgeous on the black paper with the versa mark and with the anti static powder at work it is not going to have any static and your embossing powder will just slide off the paper Now that my sentiment has come so crisp because I'm recording and everybody is watching so I will just go ahead and make some little boo boo on my edge so that you know this is how sometimes it becomes like it does not emboss properly and there's some stray embossing powder marks so first I take a brush and I try to remove the stray embossing powders and then I go ahead and heat emboss it Yes, I have not recorded so many times this has happened. I have to be careful. I emboss my sentiment and I you know how to do it. Just keep moving your heat tool and it embosses nicely. So what I do when I have such boo boos is go ahead get your white gel pen and fill in those little places. Sometimes the embossing powder is not sticking even on the letters properly. So you can use the white gel pen. And if in case your white gel pen goes out, get in a black pen again and make the E bigger and the H straighter and do all that you want. Maybe a little stray whites can be hidden with that. So cool, right? Just use white and black pen. One of the things that always happens with me is getting my stray ink from my fingers or i don't know from where do i get such marks i have got a black dot here i first try sanding it out with my sanding eraser i think everybody has that eraser now please go ahead sand it out if not then add embellishments around add some sequins here and there and sometimes when the mark is bigger and you feel like the little sequin or like the pearl will not hide it i try to stamp over it you know add these small hearts and stars and if you ever see <laughs> my cards and if you see that i have done some ink splatters well most of the time the ink splatters are something that i'm trying to hide i am a little like finicky for cats and i do love to do the splatters but more so when i have some ink marks and some colors around you know the splatters camouflage the florals so beautifully even the background for critters put some water drops on the distress background and voila magic nobody can find out the mistakes so here i do little hearts in red and that cover up my small little specks and the next mistake is like oh so irritating and i am so sure you've done it too and tearing your card front upside down on your card base well i try to always look if i'm not doing it wrong but when i do it wrong what i do is i take my heat tool and apply the heat behind my card stock and i take a spatula so this is the spatula that i use mostly for removing my adhered card stocks 
it is hardly used for mixed media so what you have to do is when you heat your cardstock from behind put it down like this and press on to your card panel which you have done which you've colored or stamped so that it does not warp and if in case something has to warp it's just the card base so when we remove the cardstock like this at least our card panel on which we've spent so much time is not warped and is saved you can put something heavy on the card base so it flattens out or you can run it through your die cutting machine my next step is using glue on your foam tape before you adhere it onto the cardstock not just when you've removed it from the cardstock but you also when you are sticking it for the first time you can also use these peel outs i don't know what it, they called but you can adhere them on your cardstock before you put a heavy weight on it so that it does not get stuck so the glue on the 3d foam tape will give you time to wriggle and put the cardstock correctly and you know you can at least do a little mistake and not get tensed about it like oh i have spoiled no, you have some time to wriggle the cardstock this is why I love this tip and uh, I want to thank my friend Deepti Agarwal and she's the one who told me this some years back and I really love to use this. Also when you have some frayed edges on your cardstock, you can go over with your nail or with your finger over it and remove it or like soften it out. Also you can take your sanding eraser and rub out the frayed edges and you will get some bits of paper and it will look neat now. So for all the display purpose and teaching you I used a white sentiment over a black cardstock but I want to match the blush color of the fashionable girl's cheek for my sentiment so I'm stamping with black ink on a pink cardstock and die cut it and mount it on the foam tape for finishing off the card. If you watched Adit's video she shared such great hacks when we are doing ink blending i have some ideas too and i would share them with you and i'll be using this miraculous mini slimline die by crafty miracle this die cuts out beautiful outline and i'm going to use a black outline for my card i love to use rainbow colors for my backgrounds but have you ever noticed that they go muddy like there is a brown color when we are mixing it do you know how to avoid it so here i'm taking a pink color and i'm blending it on my cardstock and to make it muddy what I have to do is take a color which is going to be opposite to it in a color wheel. So in a color wheel if you go any way it is going to be perfect. You take purple and you take blue and you take orange and you take pink and reds it is going to be perfect. But in case you go opposite on the color wheel it will create a mud. Oh, and also you can get inky fingers anytime you're doing ink blending. In case you're messy like me, yes, this may happen quite often. So coming back to my color wheel, if I use green opposite to red paint, it will go muddy. And this is how if I take cracked pistachio now and blend it with my picked raspberry. Raspberry and pistachio are not a good combination. Okay, now what happens when we transfer some ink on the cardstock? First, try not to do it. Use a baby wipe to wipe off your fingers when you are dealing with inks and ink blending on the paper. Second is in case they are water based like if they are distress oxides and distress inks, you can take them off easily with water. I just dip a brush in water and wipe off the ink with it and it usually does the work. You can just clean it off with something cleaner that you may have in your hand like a baby wipe or like any wipe. Also for more intense areas you can try using a baby wipe too. It may not clean it completely but it will take off most of the pigment. Next thing is clean up your surface as you are ink blending so you do not transfer the ink onto your fingers and on the cardstock or anywhere else. So keep your surface clean. So here I go around and do my ink blending. I am going with the rainbow order. So my rainbow has pink. I take pink and orange and now because on the color wheel you have orange and violet next to the red pink colors. I am going to take violet which will be next to my pink above. So it does not create a mess. 
Also you have to remember like now we are thinking about pink not creating a mess with purple but will it make muddy with orange? It may but then we have to restrict our color blending like don't mix it too much. That when you know that it will go opposite to another color wheel. So just keep this in your head and maybe get a color wheel because I really always look up to my color wheel whenever I am doing even normal coloring not just ink blending. You will appreciate colors better when you have a color wheel around. So after my ink blending I will add my die cut panel. Well I will tell you why I realized that I made mud and I should show it to you because in one of my previous cards while I was blending ink for my butterflies I made browns at two different places. And this was purple and yellow at one place and, and pink and green at another. And here because I had brown at the middle which was quite prominent, I hid it with a strip of paper with the sentiment on it. So you can improvise and hide your mistakes and I hope I have given you many ideas to hide your mistakes and not make them at all. And I hope you will check out Adit's video if you have not checked it already. Thank you so much for stopping by. I would love if you would give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Take care and happy crafting.